Hey there, good to see you. Today in this video, I will be reviewing this new uh, compact travel tripod made by Freewell. This is a tripod they call the Real Travel Tripod. Technical name is the FWT-1, which I assume means Freewell Tripod 1, if I had to guess. Anyway, this tripod here fits in the category of travel tripods, which is a specific type of tripod that offers you know the same functionality, the same benefits of a standard full-size tripod, but in a form factor that is smaller, lighter, and more compact. There are a number of different compact travel tripods that are out there made by different brands. And this one does have some unique features, some unique uh, benefits, but this tripod also has some cons. I used this tripod recently for a week uh, when I went out to California to do some landscape photography. And I use this tripod not for photography, but for video as my secondary tripod, because in order to get shots of, well, me doing photography, I have to have another camera and another tripod. And in situations like that, well, I don't want to be carrying another full-sized tripod, right? I mean, having something that is smaller and lighter uh, is so much nicer. Before we go any further, I need to let you know that Freewell did provide me with this tripod, uh, but they have not paid for this video, they've not sponsored this video, and they've not been involved in this video in any way. They are seeing this video at the exact same time you are. All right, so let's begin here with the pros. Some of the things that are good about this travel tripod from Freewell, some of the things that I like about it, some of the things that are different compared to other travel tripods that are available. First, weight. This is one of the best features of this particular tripod because this weighs just under two pounds, which is incredibly light. It is basically nothing when you're when you're packing a camera backpack like I am. And part of the reason why this tripod is so light is because the legs are made of carbon fiber. Now, typically when you buy a tripod, you have the option between carbon fiber and aluminum for the legs. Both are you know pretty much the same when it comes to long-term durability, but aluminum is a cheaper material and is heavier compared to carbon fiber. So it's not nice that a more premium material like carbon fiber was used in the legs for this tripod because it does make it lighter. This tripod has a center column here, which obviously you can use to you know raise and lower uh, your camera in order to get it higher if need be. And at the bottom of the center column, there is a, uh, a hanging hook. This is something you use to further stabilize the tripod, keep it from blowing over if you're experiencing wind. And then when you unscrew the hook, there is a little uh, hex wrench inside of it. And this hex wrench matches the screws here at the top of the center column. You can remove the center column entirely if you want to uh, further reduce the weight of the tripod, or you can take the tripod head off, flip the center column around, and then you're able to get your camera in an underslung upside down position if you need to get the camera really low down to the ground. And that's nice. I like how quick and easy it is to, uh, to make changes to the center column to flip the camera upside down. The one thing to be aware of though, is that these screws here, and this was similar to the Ulanzi uh, tripod that I reviewed, the screws here that, that keep the center column attached are rather tight. So I had to get a wrench and hold on to get, you know, for sufficient torque, you know, clamp a wrench onto the end of this, and then I was able to loosen up the screws. So make sure you loosen them up at least once, you know, like because you don't want to be out in the field trying to get these things unscrewed. The legs are fully adjustable with, you know, the, the common push tabs that you see on, you know, other tripods. You push them down and they click back into place. You'll also notice over here on the side, uh, this little white circle here. This is actually an air tag, which is interesting. I mean, I don't have a habit of losing my tripod. Um, or, you know, have any need really to track it. But I guess part of the reason for that is like, if you have your camera and your tripod set up and you turn around to do something and someone just runs up and just grabs your tripod and your camera and runs off with it, well, I guess at least then you're, you're able to track it. Now these screws are different than this. They don't use the same, you know, they're not the same diameter. You have to use your own screwdriver. So this is not something that you would uh, you know, mount while you're out in the field. This is something you would do at home before, you know, taking the tripod out somewhere. Around the outside of the base plate up here, there are two quarter 20 uh, threads here that you can use to attach, say, like a magic arm or a monitor or a light or, you know, whatever you have. This is kind of a small space in here, so you may maybe somewhat challenging with 
uh, you know, it, depending on what it is that you're trying to mount, it may be somewhat challenging actually getting a, like a magic arm into here just because there's not a lot of room between the legs. So, you know, your mileage may vary with, you know, with these mounts. The, uh, the plate up here at the top, this is an ARCA compatible plate, so you can use your own plates if you want to. But the plate that comes with it uh, has a rather unique feature. On the back here, there are a couple of tabs. You just fold one out like so, drop it in here, tighten it down, lift up the top up here, and then you have a phone mount. And this is a, a 15 Pro Max here, so it's a, you know, it's a fairly large phone, but as you can see, it mounts just fine. So with this, it means that you don't have to bring along another, you know, mount for the tripod. You can just use the plate that comes with it. I don't think it's as nice as like a dedicated one, but if you're trying to conserve weight or you just need one in a pinch, I think that's a really clever and, and cool little design idea just to build it right into the, right into the plate. Okay, then with the legs, you may notice here that there are no like turnbuckles, there are no levers, there are no leg locks or anything like that. To extend the leg on this Freewell uh, travel tripod, you twist uh, the foot all the way to the left counterclockwise until you feel it stop, and then you extend the leg like so. And that means you can also collapse it and lock it back really quickly. This is nice when you just want to set up the tripod at full height. When you're out on the go and you just, you know, you're, you know, you don't want to mess around with the tripod and you want all three legs to be exactly the same height. Well, it's really fast and really easy. Which brings us to the cons with this particular uh, travel tripod from Freewell. As much as I like the leg design, as much as I like, you know, how clean and simple it is and how, you know, how quick and easy it is to, you know, extend and, you know, uh, lock the legs back in place. The problem with these legs and the problem that I encountered with these legs over and over again when I was out filming with this tripod for a week is that they're not particularly well suited for uneven terrain because it's not particularly easy to just extend um, you know, one leg or two legs or change, you know, make one longer than the other because the way this is designed, when you turn the foot, you will feel in here that there are four notches, like that's one, two, three, four. So when you hit four, that means all four legs are unlocked and you're able to do what I just did. In order to do just a shorter segment, well, you have to count how many that is. So you would do say one, and then you would turn a little bit more for two, and then you only have two, right? One more, nope, that's four. Go back, now I have to do it again. One, two, I think that's two, three. Nope, that was four. <laughs> Okay, so let me try that again. One, two, three. All right, I just want three leg segments and I kind of got, well, some of the fourth one here. That's totally not what I need. Those hard stops between each turn are rather soft. Like it's really easy when you're turning and twisting it back and forth or turning it uh, counterclockwise rather to skip over one of those stops. And then there's the challenge of changing the length of a leg when a camera is mounted and when the tripod is standing upright on the ground. And it's challenging because I couldn't twist the feet because the feet were obviously on the ground. So what I would have to do is twist the leg, just, you know, hold onto the leg and twist it and then just kind of, you know, shove the leg into itself and then try and twist it back by hand in order to lock it. And there were a few times during the trip where I turned around and walked away from the tripod. And then ever so slowly, these legs started collapsing on me. And then the tripod, just, pff, it just fell over. I actually scuffed up uh, one of my lenses on my Canon camera. Okay, then there is the tripod head. Now this head is actually really interesting. It's clever, it's unique, it's different. Some creativity and ingenuity went into the, the design and engineering of this because it is unlike any tripod head I've ever used and I doubt any of you have used one quite like it either. This is a combination fluid head, ball head, and 360 degree panoramic head all in one. You just, you know, loosen up the handle like so, and then you're able to tilt uh, your camera to get, you know, some of those, you know, tilting uh, style shots. Then inside of here, there is a ball head. So you loosen up this red lever here and then it moves around just like a ball head would. Then you have a 360 degree option too. So you just loosen that up and then you're able to, you know, rotate the camera like so. 
So it's, <laughs> it's interesting. I don't, I, it never really grew on me. I kept, I kept thinking I would get used to it. I kept thinking that eventually the benefit of it would, would reveal itself. And I would, you know, I would figure out how to use it and it would become more intuitive. And, but to be honest, the, the longer I used it, the more annoyed I got with it. And the more I just wished it had just a normal ball head on it. And the design is clever. I mean, effectively what they've done here is use the ball head as a leveling base for the fluid head, because usually with a, like a, a video centric tripod, you would have a leveling base down here at the bottom because you, your range of movement is limited when you have a fluid head compared to a, you know, 360 degree ball head, you would need some way, some mechanism to level the base of, of the head so that, you know, this up here is, is level so that the camera is level. But instead of going with a traditional leveling base design, they just put a ball head in it so that then you're, you know, you just move this into whatever position you want. And that's, that's clever and that's interesting, but there's no real way to tell, uh, you know, when the, uh, when your camera is level, because there's the only spirit level that's on here is, uh, up here on the uh on the top which is concealed by you know the archiplate and when your camera's up here you can't see this at all it's, it's basically pointless to have it up here it really needs to be somewhere else so that you're able to see it and you're able to tell uh when it is actually level and it's also just weird in general just you know trying to line up everything just so and get everything aligned properly so that it can function like a traditional fluid head so that you know the base is rotated into into just the right spot so that the ball head is perfectly level so you know you don't get any tilt or anything weird in your in you know these types of shots that you may be doing when shooting video it's just a lot and i found myself just uh i just basically avoided you know the fluid head functionality of this even though i was shooting video Basically, I just use it as a ball head. I just had my camera mounted up here. I would loosen this up and then just, you know, rotate this into whatever position I needed and then lock this down. So for me, the benefits of having both a ball head and a fluid video head and a rotating base in one design in practical use, I never saw the benefit of it. Like it never made sense to me. It never worked well for me. And I just kept wanting this just to have a normal ball head on it. Like if it did, I think I would have been happier with it. By the way, I should point out if this head up here bothers you and you don't like it, uh, you can remove it. I mean, you know, you can just screw it right off. It has a three eighths of an inch thread here so you can mount your own ball head if you want to. So for me, there are some definite pros and cons to this travel tripod from Freewell. I love how compact and lightweight it is. It's so easy to throw on the side of a bag and to carry it along. I love that. I also like the little AirTag accessory. I think that's pretty clever. And when you want to use the tripod at full height uh, with all four you know, leg extensions extended, it is very quick and very easy to set up when you want the tripod at full height where it gets weird is when you need some combination where you need, you know, like just one or two or three and, you know, different, uh, different lengths on each leg and then trying to, you know, adjust it, uh, you know, out in the field and, and lock it back by twisting the leg and stuff. It just, yeah, there are some definite pros and cons to this design. And for me, I just, I just never got used to it. And the same for the, the tripod head, unfortunately, I never got into the, I never saw the benefit of the ball head and the fluid head and having both of these things together. I just wanted this to be simpler and I just wanted the legs just to use traditional locks where if when I lock it, I know that the leg is locked. Like, you know, that for me was a problem. So that has been my experience using this travel tripod from uh, Freewell. And my recommendation to you is if you are shopping for this tripod, you're thinking about picking one up, do yourself a favor and do check out reviews from other people. I'm sure there's going to be other people reviewing this tripod and everyone's going to have their own opinions and experiences with it. You know, this video just, you know, simply contains mine for whatever it's worth. And unfortunately, my experience just wasn't that great. Anyway, uh, if you would like to check out more information about this tripod, um, there is a link, of course, down below in the video description you can use to learn more about it. And uh, if this review was helpful, if you learned something from it, please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up down below. I would greatly appreciate it. And feel free to leave a comment as well. Happy to answer any questions uh, if you have any that you would care to share. That's it, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. I will see you in the next one.